My name is Mark A. Jager. You can find some of my work at YouTube and Vimeo channels, Mark A. Jager. RED cameras have many features, but they're not difficult to operate. If there is one topic that is most frequently misunderstood about RED cameras, it is ISO. This video should give you complete understanding. Let's jump right to the fundamentals for ISO with RED DSMC2. The RED recording dynamic range is always the same. ISO has no influence on the R3D recording. ISO does influence image brightness on the histogram in the monitor and for images in playback and editing. Setting ISO should be balanced with the setting of physical exposure parameters. Now I encourage you to read the screen a second time and let these four points sink in. In most DSLRs and non-RED video cameras, ISO settings control sensor amplification. Once ISO is set for the recording, the amplification of the sensor signals and any noise is baked in. This limits flexibility in post-production, or what I'm going to call here post. This methodology does not apply to RED cameras. With RED DSMC2, the sensor signals are recorded as an unamplified RAW file. This allows maximum sensor information recording and maximum flexibility for adjustment in post. It's important to recognize that full dynamic range is always captured. ISO choice does not affect dynamic range. ISO choice does not affect the raw data in the R3D file. In this example, iris was adjusted using the geoscope raw data display to obtain a range of dark, neutral gray, and light areas. Four clips were recorded at ISO 250, 400, 800, and 1600. In this first graphic you can see the geoscope displays for the scene at the four ISO values. As you would hopefully expect, each image is the same as R3D recording is not influenced by ISO. Once a clip is recorded, it's important to know that ISO is metadata and it's changeable. This means before, during, or after recording. ISO only affects how the raw data is interpreted and displayed. There is no difference between images with ISO set for recording or ISO set in post. In this four frame example, you can see four clips. It is easy to see the influence ISO has on the display brightness. Image brightness does increase with increasing ISO. In this four frame, you can see the four shots again. Each has been adjusted to ISO 1600 and the result that each shot appears the same. ISO in monitoring or playback editing definitely influences brightness. In this graphic, the same four shots have been adjusted to ISO 1600 and zoomed in. Just as in the preceding graphic, the images appear the same. It's vital you understand the following. Physical exposure parameters are iris, shutter speed, neutral density filters, and lighting. Choice of ISO should be influential in the choice for physical exposure parameters and vice versa. You must achieve a balance between the physical exposure parameters and ISO. A consistent ISO for a given shoot is a really good idea. The technology underlining RED ISO is different from most DSLR and other video cameras. Raw sensor values are just numbers. Raw sensor values do not reflect anything visual until they're interpreted as color and luminosity. Now that you know that DSMC2 record raw data without regard to ISO, allow me to show a simple demonstration of the effect of ISO on the displayed image. I recorded one short clip at no lens, just a cap. Let's look at that clip in Red Scene X Pro at full resolution and 800% zoom. At ISO 200, the display is uniformly black, just as you'd expect. Here's ISO 400, the image is still uniformly black. At ISO 800 on my 4K monitor, I can see a tiny bit of subtle noise in the display. At ISO 1600, the noise is becoming noticeable. At ISO 3200, the noise is readily discernible. At ISO 6400, the noise is even more obvious. Now don't get excited, this demonstration doesn't mean your camera's a POS. Remember, this is a no light scene. You or your cat 
would be unable to see anything. Not a Zippo, total absence of light. This is also an 800% zoom. The point is, using higher ISO does not make noise, but it will amplify the noise in the RAW file to the point that you may be able to see it. Use of lower ISO avoids noise. Let's hit another big picture concept. Optimal exposure requires that a DSMC2 record as much light as practical to achieve the image, but not so much that important highlights lose detail. This is the concept of ETTR, or exposed to the right, which is common to almost all cameras. Two fundamentals, noise and clipping, drive this concept. As less light is received by the sensor, image noise progressively increases. Minor underexposure is almost always acceptable and is generally recoverable. If the sensor receives too much light, tones can become full white and no detail will be discernible. Clipping can occur on all channels or clipping may begin on one color channel resulting in color shifts. Unlike image noise progressive growth, highlight clipping can appear abruptly once the clipping threshold is passed. Minor overexposure is sometimes recoverable as long as only one channel is clipping. When clipping is over a larger area or more than one channel, then the clipping becomes hard or impossible to recover. In general, you don't want any clipping, but complete avoidance of clipping is not recommended. Instead, it's suggested that small specular highlights, those that have no significant detail anyway, be allowed to clip when you're facing difficult exposure situations. For extreme dynamic range shots, allowing a small amount of specular highlight to clip is entirely reasonable. Now most red shooters tend towards less brightness just to protect against highlight clipping. Now in this graphic, you can see a house with stucco siding where the area under the eaves is in shadow. In the first frame at ISO 250, full resolution and 200% zoom, the noise in the shadows is roughly the same as the mid-tone and highlight areas. At ISO 800 and then 1600, you can see clear increases in the shadow noise, but the mid-tone and highlight areas remain clean. Playback or editing at lower ISO may suppress highlight blowout, but it's not a cure-all. In this night shot example, the area under the eave lamp was shown to be blown out by the red area in the geoscope, as you can see here. Here's the scene with ISO 250 alongside ISO 1600. The 250 rendition has less blowout, but the red false color area from the geoscope still has no detail. It's blown out. The ISO 1600 rendition shows more blowout. The next graphic has been shown many times to explain ISO. Sometimes it's said, but most times not. But to be clear, this graphic is only addressing the processing of the raw data to generate visible information as ISO does not influence the raw recorded data. Here are some important points pertaining to the graphic. Current red DSMC2 have at least 2 to the 16th or 65,536 levels in each color channel. In common parlance, this means red DSMC2 have 16 stops or more of dynamic range. This is the left column of the graphic. The gradient on the right depicts the visible output tones. The red line represents middle gray. The dynamic and tonal ranges remain unchanged, left and right displays respectively, but the number of stops above and below middle gray in the displayed image can be changed. A higher ISO setting remaps darker objects to middle gray and vice versa. As a last part of this video, kind of like when you were in school, let's test your knowledge with some questions. I'll show you the question, give you a moment to answer it yourself, and then I'll provide the answer. First question, does the selection of ISO bias the dynamic range of a DSMC2? No, ISO is metadata and does not affect the raw values. How should one think about native or base ISO for red cameras? 
For DSMC2, the base ISO is the recommended starting point for balancing the trade-off between noise in the shadows and clipping in the highlights. What's a good numeric ISO choice for the average scene? ISO 800 is a good choice for many scenes. What range of ISO values does RED recommend? RED recommends staying in the range of ISO 250 to 3200. What ISO is best for dark scenes where it is important to keep noise out of the shadows? All right, you know this one. Low ISO values are the best choice where noise avoidance is a priority. What is the best method for choosing ISO for a dark scene? The selection of ISO for a dark scene should be as low as practical, but still high enough to allow the images to be seen. One must achieve a balance. It may be necessary to add light to the scene. What is the limitation on the choice of ISO for dark scenes? Low ISO for a dark scene may not be practical in terms of physical exposure parameters. A higher ISO value may be necessary. Changing physical exposure parameters may also be necessary. What does selection of a lower ISO do? As you know, more stops of dynamic range are devoted to shadows resulting in reduced noise and cleaner images. Correspondingly, what does selection of a higher ISO do? Well, more stops of dynamic range are devoted to highlights, fewer stops are devoted to shadows. More noise will be in the shadows. If a scene is too bright, what should be changed? Well, this is simple. If there is too much light, you need to change the physical exposure parameters. The goal is to put the DSMC2 into the lowest noise ISO range that still achieves the desired look. How is ISO applied to an image? You know the answer. ISO is applied to the raw image as metadata in the same manner as changing white balance or other metadata parameters. What limitations are there on noise? Metadata can be changed within limitations, but noise in shadows can become an issue. An ISO increase does not generate noise. The ISO increase just makes the noise that's already there more visible. Is there any difference in the images if ISO is set during recording or during post? No. With the DSMC2, where or when ISO is set does not matter. ISO is just metadata. How much can ISO be changed? Scene content and choice of physical exposure parameters will dictate the extent to which ISO can be changed. That's it for this video. This is the way ISO actually works with RED DSMC2. I hope you found the information valuable and as always, thanks for watching.